let's uh, begin the discussion of skeletal muscle relaxation this is our next topic so we have completed your general anesthesia local anesthesia okay now this will be the second and this is the next video on skeletal muscle relaxation so in which we will discuss skeletal muscle relaxation so this is important short notes or viva so let's begin the discussion one minute okay so where we use use this smr drugs which are coming under this so first use during surgery laryngoscopy intubation and in any cases of muscle spasm or muscle rigidity in all these four we can use skeletal muscle relaxant so just use the mnemonic slim surgery laryngoscopy intubation and muscle spasm now first go for the classification of smr so first group is centrally acting smr the second group is neuromuscular blockers and the third group is directly acting muscle relaxant so centrally acting smr basically in the name itself suggesting it will act on cns means brain or spinal cord okay neuromuscular blocker will act on neuromuscular junction and directly acting muscle relaxant will directly inhibit your sodium or calcium channel we will discuss each of them don't worry so first starting with the centrally acting smr so the first group of drug is benzodiazepines and you are knowing about the functioning of the benzodiazepines benzodiazepines is basically gaba a agonist okay they are gaba a agonist example diazepam okay they can be used for cerebral palsy tetanus als now the second group of drug is baclofen okay it is basically directly given at spinal cord this baclofen drug is directly given at spinal cord and this is gaba b agonist remember benzodiazepines gaba a agonist baclofen gaba b agonist and it can be used for localized muscle spasm okay it cannot be used for cerebral palsy and tetanus now coming to the tizanidine it act on brain and you are knowing tizanidine is basically alpha 2a agonist okay so it will decrease the secretion of adrenaline and all those adrenaline norepinephrine like this okay so it will, can be used for cerebral palsy a myotopic lateral sclerosis and tetanus now the fourth group of drug is mifensin group okay it it also acts on spinal cord and this is basically gaba a chloride channel stimulant clear and drug coming under this alpha loxalone mifensin carisoprodol methocarbamol and chloroxazone clear they are hepatotoxic drugs so rarely used nowadays now coming to the most important section and most important part of the skeletal muscle relaxation that is direct muscle relaxation so it includes two drug that is tunin and dantrolene now tunin how tunin works so tunin basically blocks entry of sodium so it will inhibit sodium sodium entry inside the cell and this will be the drug of choice for nocturnal leg cramps but rarely used nowadays okay now coming to the dantrolene clear coming to the dantrolene so this dantrolene basically blocks calcium release from smooth endoplasmic reticulum okay this dantrolene uh, blocks calcium release from your scr that is smooth endoplasmic reticulum by blocking your circa that is also known as ranodine receptor antagonist this drug is also known as ranodine receptor antagonist now it is ry r1 blocker only it does not show any effect on ry2 ry1 present in skeletal muscle and ry2 present in on heart so it will only and only block ry r1 okay ranodine receptor 1 and this is drug of choice for malignant hyperthermia remember drug of choice for malignant hyperthermia is dantrolene and suppose if there is inhibition of release of calcium from scr then there will be no muscle contraction then there will be relaxation clear root oral or iv side effect is diarrhea and hypertoxicity clear now moving to the next part that is neuromuscular blocking smr smr so this is another very important section for short notes and viva examination okay very very important so what it does this neuromuscular blocking smr what how it works so it blocks basically nm receptor of acetylcholine okay Acetyl, you all, all are knowing acetylcholine works on nm receptor so it's, it's, it basically blocks this nm receptor and on this basis it is divided into two groups depolarizing smr non depolarizing smr there is some difference in making of action this depolarizing include succinylcholine dexamethonium succinylcholine is known as succinylcholine this non depolarizing has three group curare group curium group and curinium group now first coming to depolarizing smr how it works so it works in two phase okay there is two phase mechanism of action in first phase what happens there will be initial opening of nm receptor okay there will be sorry initial stimulation of nm receptor and that will lead to initial opening of sodium channel and that will lead to increase sodium entry means in the first part it is depolarizing the muscle basically so that will show twitching and fasciculation but in second phase 
due to over stimulation that will lead to desensitization or refractive phase it will enter into refractive phase or desensitization phase clear and that will lead to flaccid paralysis so in first phase it is causing depolarization that's why this is known as depolarizing smr but in second phase there will be desensitization of the receptor and receptor stops working clear now coming to the non depolarizing smr so it in the first it has no such mechanism it just just completely blocker of nm receptor so there will be no sodium entry so there will be no depolarization so initial twitching present in this absent in this new stigma if you provide new stigma as an antidote there will be no effect because the receptors are desensitized but it has effect in non depolarizing smr okay order of muscle paralysis it first muscle to be paralyzed is neck and last diaphragm here first fingers last diaphragm so this is the basic difference between this depolarizing smr and non depolarizing smr difference between depolarizing and non depolarizing just remember the difference very important now coming to the clinical assessment of smr how we assess the smr so one we use train of four means four electrical stimulus we provide every 0.5 second okay and normal muscle has four con contraction okay normal muscle has four contraction if there is any uh, abnormality in this number we can assess smr action clear okay now the next is your double burst stimulation we can give two stimulus of 50 hertz on same muscle so in normal condition this effect if you give curare this type of effect you will get and in succinyl choline this type of effect you will get then you can use post titanic potentiation basically in this 5 hertz stimulus for 5 second clear now coming to the pharmacokinetics of smr so all smr are highly ionized so they should not be given orally highly ionized so there will be very little absorption if you give that drug orally it is only given through iv or im route shortest is your succinyl choline followed by gentacurium followed by mivacurium fastest is succinyl choline followed by repacurium followed by rocuronium longest acting is doxacurium followed by pancuronium most potent doxacurium least potent galamine so these things you have to remember they are very difficult to remember but you have to remember okay at least most potent now coming to the metabolism of this drug so succinyl choline and mivacurium they two these two are metabolized by pseudocholine esterase okay these two succinyl choline and mivacurium will be metabolized by pseudocholine esterase this gentacurium by cysteine adduction by cysteine adduction and the last hoffman elimination is also there hoffman elimination is shown by those this two that cystracurium and atracurium means this hoffman elimination is just example of spontaneous metabolism means there is no involvement of any organ or there is no involvement of any enzyme clear yeah? so this type of means drugs which are which are eliminated through this process hoffman elimination there will be safest smr in liver and renal failure i have discussed this hoffman elimination in our general pharmacology videos clear yeah? okay very very important now this cystracurium there will be no histamine release there basically it does not cause histamine release okay no lodoncin but this uh, atracurium causes release of histamine it also forms lodanosin that causes seizures now coming to the succinyl choline so succinyl choline basically two molecules of sch self life life is two years and storage temperature is two to eight degree centigrade and the drug of choice for intubation okay you can remember the dose 0 0.75 to 1.5 mg per kg this is the overall shortest and fastest smr this succinyl choline is overall shortest and fastest smr side effect it can cause hypercalcemia that will may lead to cardiac arrest it can cause malignant hyperthermia due to increased potassium just remember these points only contraindication is muscle dystrophies liver failure neurological abnormalities now coming to the non depolarizing smr so maximum histamine release is seen by deep tubocutory that will lead to hypotension as well so these are the side effects which are associated with non depolarizing smr so because of the release of histamine it may lead to hypotension and asthma clear but some drugs such as cystaracurinium it does not cause any histamine release atracurinium atracurinium causes some amount of histamine release but not so much so we have dis here, 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 here we have discussed that difference basically okay maximum nn blocker is d tubocutary so that will lead to tachycardia no nn blockage by vacuronium so cardio safer drug okay and this is a drug of choice for cardiac surgery vacuronium getting my points now coming to the debuken number so as we already discussed then with the help of debuken number we just assay the pseudo uh, pseudocholine stress activities clear so measurement measurement of the qualitative activity of pseudocholine stress and the percentage of the enzyme which is inhibited by 
Dibuken because this called Dibuken inhibit the pseudocholine state. Dibuken when given IV it will inhibit plasma pseudocholine state enzyme. If Dibuken number is coming between 7 to 80 then homozygous typical normal means patient is normal 50 to 60 homozygous heterozygous atypical means does not degrade succinyl choline. If 20 to 30 it, is, it means homozygous atypical. Clear? Now reversal for reversal of SMR the drug of choice will be neostigmine. We can also give uh, suga metax. This is modified gamma cyclodextrin. Okay. So this is about a skeletal muscle accent in short. And this is the classification of non depolarizing SMR. Stoidal includes PVR, pancuronium, piperquironium, V for vacuronium, R for rocuronium, and repacuronium. Then benzosocunolin includes D tubocurie, metocurine, atracurium, doxacurium, cystracurium, mevacurium, and gentacurium. T Madam G, T, Madam G, then galamine not used now, it is nephrotoxic and causing tachycardia. So, this is all about your smarts. Thank you for watching. Best of luck and please subscribe our channel.